In this video, we're going to solve a calculus problem related to a pulsing function. We have a three-part function f of t here, which we want to integrate. The first part of the problem wants us to determine an expression for f of t over the time range 0 to t3 in terms of the variable shown, which would be f1, 0, f2, t1, t2, and t3. We can see that f of t has the value f1 up until time t1, and then from time t1 to t2, the value is f2, and then from time t2 to t3, the value is 0. Whenever we have a multi-part function like f of t, I try to write it in terms of the unit step function h of t. Recall that h of t equals 0 if its argument is negative, and 1 if its argument is 0 or positive. We can use the unit step function to help us decide when to turn on or off the individual components of f of t. This gives us two different ways to express our function f of t. You might be wondering, what exactly do these quantities represent? They basically represent toggles telling us when to turn on or off f1 and f2. I think it's a lot easier to explain with a plot, so let me plot this function first. I'm going to plot both of these functions individually. Let's start with a regular unit step function h of t. And now let's plot h of t minus t1. When we subtract these two functions, we're left with just this area right here. This function returns the value 1 from all times up until t1 and 0 from t1 onwards. That means when we multiply by f1, we're essentially telling it that the value of the function is f1 from all times up until 0 to t1, and then f1 times, well, 0, from t1 onwards, or just 0. Therefore, this type of construction represents a very fancy way to basically express that f1 will be active only from 0 to 1. We can do a similar thing with this function over here. When we subtract these two functions from each other, we're left with a similar looking rectangular plot. This in essence does the same thing as that, but now the function is active from t1 to t2 instead of 0 to t1. I hope this statement makes a lot more sense now. Keep in mind that these two are equivalent statements, so please try to understand both of them. Okay, part b of the problem wants us to determine an expression for the integral i of t equals the integral from t0 equals 0 to t of f of t0 dt0 over the entire range 0 to t3. So basically, we want to take the integral of this three-part function. There are two ways to do this. One way is more of the analytical way, which I'll do first. The second way is more of a graphical method, and it's logical and easy to understand, but it's not as mathematically rigorous. We see that f of t is a three-part function, so it's probably best if we split the integral into three separate integrals, one for each region. Let's start with the first region, which is from 0 to t to t1. The integral from 0 to t1 is just the integral from 0 to t of f of 1 dt0. Keep in mind that f1 is a constant so we can move it outside the integral. The integrand is just 1, so what this really means is that the integral equals f1 times t0 evaluated from t to 0. When we evaluate that, we just get f1 times t. Keep in mind that our variable of integration is t0, not t. Here's our answer for the first region, and now let's move on to the second region. The second region occurs from t1 to t all the way up to t2. Now we have two regions to integrate. One region accounts for the first case, which we just did, and the other region accounts for the t1 to t2 case.
The first integral on the left accounts for the region from 0 to t1. The integral on the right accounts for the region from t1 all the way up to t2. We already know from the first part that the integral of this is just f1 times t, but now if we change this t up here to t1, then this will become an f1 times t1. And once again, we can pull the f2 here outside the integral because it's a constant. The integrand of the integral is just 1, so we can rewrite i of t as f1 t1 plus f2 times t0 evaluated from t to t1. And that gives us i of t equals f1 t1 plus f2 times the quantity t minus t1. And for the third region, we can do something pretty similar. Now we have three regions to integrate. The first region accounts for the first case, right here. The second case accounts for the second region, right here. And the third case accounts for the time from t2 to t3. I guess this one's pretty easy, because obviously this entire integral will cancel out. We know what the value of this is, and we kind of know what the value of this is based on the last part with a minor tweak. If we change this t to t2, then all we have to do is reevaluate this part of the integral, and this will give us the answer for i of t for the region 3. And this is our answer for i of t for region 3. Now that we have the three individual cases, we can combine them. Just like we did for the first part, we can express the entire f of t in terms of the unit step function. This pretty long expression gives us an equivalent representation of i of t. So this is how we do it analytically. In the next video, we're going to redo this problem using a more graphical approach. See you next time.